How do I, how do I feel today? I, I feel excited but anxious. I'm, I'm excited about seeing the boat in the water, um, but she is big and beautiful and I'm anxious about being in charge of something that is so wonderful. It, it's a real honour to have a, a boat of this size and yeah, it, it's, it's quite frightening, really. Um, she's beautiful and I, I, I feel as though I almost don't deserve her. It's going to be a wonderful journey once she's in the water. It's going to be the start of a, a new journey, really. We've been through the build process and now we're going through um, the life of sailing on Constance. And, you know, that, that will be a new adventure for me. I first came across Ben um, online, really, uh, just looking for boat builders in the southwest. Um, I was keen on building a Tosha. I was going to build one myself. I had a sort of workshop all set up to do it. Um, and then I'd sort of looking at Ben on the internet and his build of Panacea, uh, where he was calling for volunteers. I thought that would be an, an ideal opportunity for me to learn a bit more about boat building. However, the timing wasn't quite right. Uh, we had a small holding, uh, we were running a bed and breakfast and I couldn't really spare the sort of time that would have been required to, to come down and, and help out. <laughs> so, so Constance onto the water and um, I just want to take this opportunity to thank everybody who's made it possible for her to come into being. Um, but we later met Ben when we were looking for a boat and we came down to look at Alva uh, Ben's boat, that the, the boat he built first, um, and he convinced us that she was too small and <laughs> we needed something bigger for our requirements. So he said he could build us a boat um, and, and this is what we've done. Um, so three years ago we sat down around the table, Ben, myself and Jack Gifford, the um, naval architect, and we came up with a design for Constance and we started work on her September 2019 and yes I was involved to start with um, I worked with Ben and the team for the first five or six months to the point where we got the first plank well we got the last plank on actually and we've, we fully planked her and then unfortunately Covid hit and everybody's plans changed to Constance and, and all the people who built her that may carry her through safely through fair weather and foul bringing them ever closer to the wonder of nature and the truth of themselves. Yay! I named this boat Constance. May Neptune bless her and keep her safe for all those who sail in her. After the launch, me and Simon and the guys gathered early in the morning and jumped on board Constance 
and took her for a first trip up the river and out into the Carrick Roads. Once we were out there, we saw that the wind was strong and uh, decided to set the staysail alone for a downwind sail over to Falmouth. In Falmouth, um, we had a little bit of trimming to do. Um, we put some ballast on board to make her sit well on her water lines. We had some adjustments to make to the sails to ensure she was sailing properly. I crew on a Falmouth working boat and I've always been interested in, in gaff rig boats and sort of West Country boats. Um, so I had a sort of idea in my head of what I wanted. And speaking to Ben, he was very keen on um, Falmouth key punts and he'd wanted to build a replica of Curlew. So I think between Ben and myself, we came up with an idea around what type of boat we wanted and we sat down with Jack and Jack sort of translated our thoughts into an actual design on paper. And it was quite a quick process really. We had about two or three iterations and, and she was there and we all, we all loved what, what she looked like. My wife Kay got very involved in the interior design. She knew, she knew exactly what she wanted from the interior and we managed to fit that into, into the boat. I think the fact that Falmouth key punts and Falmouth working boats are so sort of spacious, you know, deep draft and spacious, you can fit an awful lot inside one. So, um, you know, we've got a fantastic boat with, with lots of accommodation space. So working with Ben and his team has been, been fantastic. Um, I was very nervous to start with. Um, I mean, I've, I've got woodworking experience and I've built a very small boat, but um, you know, I'm not a boat builder. So I was concerned about whether or not I'd be accepted into the team. Ben expects you to do a job as soon as you turn up. And the first thing we did was start lofting the, um, the lines for the boat on the loft floor and Ben pretty much left me to it and you know I'd ask for his advice and he would give it but um, yeah he expected me to get on with it and, and do the job I was supposed to do so it was it, yeah it was a, a, a baptism of fire um, but Ben was very supportive and and the, the guys who are working for him are superbly skilled and well you can see by the the quality of the workmanship in the boat um, they're they're craftsmen um, and it's been, it's been an absolute delight. I mean, the smell, the smell in the boatyard is, is fantastic. The smell of oak, the smell of Douglas fir. It's, yeah. Certain people have that sort of affinity to wood and I think I'm one of those. Uh, I mean, unfortunately, I couldn't work with them through the whole build because of COVID. Um, but Ben is the type of guy that you don't need to be there on site all the time. I mean, I, I would come down and see the boat and be amazed at the progress and how he'd you know, put his thought process into everything. Um, and I was, I've never been disappointed by anything he's done. He's just made a fantastic job of it. Lift off to the side quite easily. I mean, you're only ever gonna lift that, you're only ever gonna take that off again. Is that with two and one, is it? Two and two. Building a boat is just a fantastic experience that I, I doubt whether I'll ever do again. I doubt whether I'll be able to afford to do again. Um, but it's been, it's been wonderful and I would thoroughly recommend it to anybody.
plans for the boat are she's going to go on a mooring at St Moore's. Um, I've got a part share in a Falmouth working boat over there, so I go down to St Moore's quite a lot to race. Um, so she's partly going to be a home for me uh, when I'm down at St Moore's. And the plan is to go out family sailing, really. I'd, I can't imagine I'll be racing her very often, maybe once a year. No, I think more pleasure sailing. Um, yeah, get, get friends and family on board, go over to the Scillies, explore the south coast, go up to the west coast of Scotland. So later in the summer, once all the sail adjustments had been made um, and the boat was going as well as she could, me and Simon uh, took her out on some great days out, sunny days with plenty of breeze to put her through her paces. And what a fantastic feeling it was to be on board that boat and to experience her, her speed and her balance and her finesse um, after all that hard work we put into her. It, it was a, I can't really explain in words how, how wonderful it was to see all the elements come together to make a boat that, that was so good natured in her ability to tack, uh, her balance, the ease of leaving her at the, you could leave her uh, sailing herself pretty much. Um, and uh, just wonderful to see Simon's joy in, in, in being on this boat that he's now going to have a whole new life with. <laughs>